Right, this is what we're looking at. Breakfast. I couldn't be more sorry. I'm so sorry. I forgot to intro the video. But basically, the other day, I made Joshua Wiseman, who is a YouTube chef. I feel like he's the most popular YouTube chef out of all the chefs out there. Um, and I made his cinnamon rolls. And my family were like, these are the best cinnamon rolls you've ever made. So then I thought, hey, if his cinnamon rolls are good, this means that his other recipes are going to be good. So I've bought his cookbook and today we're going to be testing out all of the recipes in his cookbook. So we're going to have a whole day of eating Josh Wiseman's recipes. So let's get started. There are some really, really yummy breakfast. I really want to try the congee at some point, like a proper congee. Um, this also took my fancy cinnamon toast. Looks a bit lovely. Um, also, don't mind my nails. Yes, they are not looking the best, Nick. I ripped off all of my gel nail polish because I am a fool. Literally everything looks nice. Here we go. What lured me into the French toast is his description because it literally says, for some reason, French toast people rarely make at home. People always order it at brunch. And that is true. I've only ever gotten French toast once and that was in a restaurant in New York. You can go and watch the New York vlogs if you really want. If you want to, you can, feel free. Um, and I thought, hey, I've never made it before. Because in my eyes, I don't know how I feel about French toast. So I'm going to give it a go at home um, and see if I like it or not. Let's make some French toast. So we need to add in the cinnamon, nutmeg, sugar, salt, whole eggs and egg yolks. So we're just going to get that in a nice little dish. I'm going for this one because I feel like that's perfect to go with the, with the bread. This fresh hands taking a bath. Long on Saturday night. I'm sorry, but the noise of cracking an egg will forever be one of the most satisfying noises in the world. I don't know what it is about a cracking of an egg that just absolutely hits the spot for me. You know like when you open and close a lipstick, that sort of thing would also have to be in the top 10 sounds of the life. I said it once and I'll say it again. Making breakfast or baking anything in pyjamas ultimately levels up the experience and then we whisk in the milk heavy cream i have actually half this recipe because it's just me eating it but that's life luxuries isn't it just making yourself some french toast because why the heck not i've got my butter in my pan back here and i'm just gonna dunk a roux these pieces of white bread in our mixture and soak it all up soak it up so Okay, so I think I'm just going to put my first piece of bread in. Yeah, beautiful. I don't know why, but there's something really sinister about this piece of bread just floating. What is it that's freaking me out? And <laughs> I don't know, but it's just giving me weird vibes. It's bubbling and I don't know when to flip it. I don't want to flip it at the wrong point. I'm going to give her a little flipperoo because I don't want it to burn. Ooh, I might be a bit premature in the flipping process, potentially, but... Oh yeah, baby. It's looking nice and golden brown. I think we're ready, to be honest. Soak up all that butter. And now we need to plate up. So I'm just going to take my lovely crispy French toast. That was not done very nicely, was it, Grace? Top it with a bit of fresh fruit. And then we're going to do the syrup shot. There we go. There's the French toast. Let's give her a try. What do you think? Have I done a good job or not? Now, our old dear friend Josh actually did say to pair it with some whipped cream, but I didn't read that and we don't have any. So uh, we cannot partake in that, I'm afraid. Mmm, that's really good. Mmm. I do want to say though, I don't know why French toast gets quite the hype that it gets. Much more of a pancake or a waffle girl. It's time for lunch and I am going to be having this delicious looking parmesan and nut crusted salmon yeah baby so we're just gonna get everything together now i am i don't know if this is cheating or not but i am using pre-bought mayonnaise don't hate me we all know that i don't have the best history with mayonnaise so um we're gonna go in with the mayonnaise first this is very rogue this situation um for the nut crust but we're just gonna give it a go mayonnaise an instrument sometimes i have these things in my head that i just have to say and then people were like well, did Grace actually think mayonnaise was an instrument? But no, it's normally a quote from something. Whole grain mustard. You know what? Whole grain mustard does not get enough praise in the UK. Garlic salt. You come from a land down under. We just give it a nice little, a little mix of really. This is going to be 
a little DIY because we don't have any bags in our house that I can use to crush. So I'm just going to use a grace method. The motto of life at the moment is adapt and overcome. And we don't have a mortar and pestle either. So I'm just going to... Okay, we have our salmon. We have every little section that we need. So what we do now is we brush it with the mayonnaise garlicky mixture situation. If the French toast is anything to go by, this is gonna be absolutely stonking. Top with a generous amount of the cheesy nut mixture. Yay, right, that's gonna go in the oven now. This is what it looks like before. Let's put her in the oven and see how she turns out. Because we're having quite a light lunch of the salmon and some veg, I really want a nice pudding. And I've chosen a pudding that I would never really like think to make. We're gonna have this, banana hot fudge sundae. And you actually have to make the fudge sauce to go on it. I just saw it and it looks like something from a cartoon. It looks like my mouth wants that right now. While I have your attention as I'm weighing everything out, can we just have a moment? Basically, I dropped our nice Pyrex that we have um, and I just went and bought a new one to replace it. But how genius, it comes with a lid. How great is that? In the cream go. Right, we're getting the sauce on the go. Why is it that sweet, melty things look so inviting? Like any time that you melt butter and chocolate, butter and sugar, sugar, it just, there's something so glossy and inviting about it. Now we go in with our dark chocolate. This smells absolutely phenomenal. I cannot wait to have this banana sundae. So we've got a cocoa powder that needs to go in there. I need to get a whisk, I guess. Whisk until glossy. Okay, we're taking it back to the heat and then we whisk for 30 seconds until thick and glossy. It literally smells like brownie butter. This smells like actually maybe one of the most delicious things I've ever made in my whole entire life. And it was so easy. Right, I'm gonna leave that to cool whilst we go and prep our salmon. Okay, the timer has gone off for the salmon, so let's have a little peek. I'm really nervous, I hope, it, I hope it's good. Oh my word, that looks so scrummy. Don't mind this rice, this was left over, so I just wanna use it up. Um, Josh would never, Josh would never. This is what our little, I, th I wonder if I could maybe next time do it slightly more crushed. I don't know if I've crushed my nuts enough. This salmon. Oh, I can't wait to try it. Okay, let's give this cheesy nutty salmon a go, which I would never have tried if it wasn't for Josh providing us with the with the recipe. <laughs> The flavors, the flavors of the salmon are amazing. Also, you could use that like nutty cheesy crust on loads of things. Oh my word, Josh has not let us down this far. I was about to say, whoever's in a relationship with Josh is a very lucky person. However, he's given us the recipes so we can literally do this ourselves. We don't need Josh to cook it for us. We can cook it ourselves. Absolutely sensational. I really thought that we had kind of peaked with recipes when I had that absolutely fantastic cinnamon roll, but they just keep getting better and better. That salmon was unmatched. And now we're gonna make our banana hot fudge sundae. So it's called a little bit, our little sundae sauce, so it's actually manageable to consume. Um, and we're just gonna have a go at making it. Okay, well, that we're already off to a bad start. It's fine, that one can just go in the middle, no one has to see. I would really like to work in an ice cream shop for like a hot minute, because I just wanna be able to scoop the most perfect scoop ever. I hate that bit on a banana. Ew, so gross. Bananas are actually a bit gross when you think about it. I don't know why, I just don't trust bananas. If bananas were people, I don't think I would like them. Not to be, not to be rude or anything. Okay, so we put our two banana slices either side. Drizzle with the fudge sauce. Big old drizzle of our chocolate hot fudge sauce. Oh my gosh, this is looking good. This, I also wanna, Mm. We go on top with double cream, but like I said earlier, we don't actually have any double cream. So I'm just gonna go on with a bit of yogurt. Little bit rogue, I am aware. But hey, what did yogurt ever do to you? We go on with the pièce de résistance, 
the most luxurious thing in the world. He's called them Luxardo cherries, but I think this is what they are in England. Maraschino. This is one of those moments when I'm so annoyed at myself. It literally says on the jar, Luxardo cherries. It literally says it, Grace. You fool. I've never had one of these before, but they look absolutely fantastic. So I'm just going to pull off. And I've added some chopped nuts on top. I actually went for walnuts because I prefer them to hazelnuts. Can you see here all the chocolate fudge sundae sauce is like hardened on top of the ice cream? I am going to use that chocolate fudge sundae sauce recipe all of the flipping time. I am so excited about this. This looks so good. Let's get a mouthful with everything in. Oh my days. Josh Wiseman, you're a wise, wise man. That is sensational. And do you know what? I don't hate the yogurt on it. I don't. I'm not opposed to the yogurt. Mm. It's so everything just works together so flipping well. The ice cream, the chocolate. I think I'm gonna have to make a Josh Wiseman fan page. No, I truly am. This is everything I wanted it to be and more. Absolutely exceeded my expectations. Now it's a little bit later and I'm prepping for dinner tonight because why did no one tell me that I had chocolate fudge sauce on my chin? I wasn't going to include the clip, but I foolishly tried to eat the chocolate fudge sauce off of the whisk. That was a bad idea. And clearly didn't see that it was all over my face. I have got pudding and it's very fitting for pudding actually because I've been doing a little series over on Grack Snacks, which is my little foodie Instagram account if you want to check it out. Um, but I have been doing testing to find the best cookie recipe. So we're going to try out. The old Josh, old Josh wise man, his little chocolate chip cookie recipe. So we're gonna go in with both types of sugar, which is the brown sugar and the granulated sugar. And again, it gets me every time because I'm always so tempted to put in caster sugar, but uh, he said granulated, so that's what we do. Let's add our melted butter on a steady stream. Is this steady streamy enough? I'm not very, I have added in the egg and the vanilla and it's just mixing it up. This will be interesting to see how these cookies are because I made a recipe the other day and my brother-in-law said they're the best cookies ever had. So we're gonna see if old Joshy boy can fare up to the mix. And then we go with the chocolate, which let me tell you, it is a lot of chocolate. My little hands have just chopped all of this chocolate. It's a lot, it's a lot of dark chalk. And now we put it in the fridge and I've added all the chocolate. And it does say to leave it for a minimum of 30. Has that chocolate been on my mouth the whole time? Yes, it has. Why did no one tell me? Why didn't you tell me that I had chocolate on my mouth? You're naughty, you are. And a little bit of chocolate in your teeth. You're just a bit of a mess. I'm gonna put that in the fridge. It says a minimum of 30 minutes or overnight. Now, yesterday when I was planning this video, it was a gray, dreary day. However, today's not quite so gray and dreary, but yesterday when I was filming it, it was, and it meant that I was really craving some good soup. Now I, I'm a soup lover. There's no denying it. I feel like everyone and their brother knows. Soup is one of my favorite foods in the world. It's the comforting, it's just everything about it. Um, and I'm gonna be making his mum's chicken noodle soup. And I am a chicken noodle soup connoisseur at this point. So I am ready to judge. And I'm ready to be critical. Because so far he has been, his recipes have proven very successful. And I'm ready to crank up the critical level, like uh, Ego and Ratatouille how he was really critical. I'm ready. I wanna make sure that I find out whether this is truly a good recipe or not. Onions are my most, no, my least favorite thing to chop. I hate flipping, chopping onions, but it's got to be done. All right, one hour on the clock for this little guy right here. Can't find the saucepan lid, so I'm having to use this one. Um, but it's got the carrots, the onion, celery, and the chicken, and the broth in there doing its thing for one hour. I totally forgot to put our little herbies in. Whilst the soup is doing its thing, I am actually going to do the cookies. Now, surprisingly, this cookie mix only makes eight, but that's a lot of cookie mix, I feel like. Um, and Josh, our old friend, Joshy, actually has said to do 
one sheet at a time bake one sheet at a time with only four on so um this could be we could be here for a while if you want a lot of cookies this is not the recipe for you my cookie scoop was no help at all because oh i think i just put cookie in my hair cookie in my hair cookie in my hair i don't care that i get cookie in my hair um these are massive i need to roll them into little balls um because if he wants eight this is how big they're supposed to be if, if he wants eight I just feel like these are gonna spill all over the pan. But we trust Joss. I just took the cookies out because they're supposed to get banged and I just bang them. And then I have to take it out at seven o'clock, seven minutes and bang it again. <laughs> all whilst I'm deboning this chicken. <laughs> right, the chicken has gone back in, um, taken it all off the bone and I've cut it into little pieces. The next step for the chicken noodle soup, I am dubious about because it's one that creates extra washing up that I feel isn't necessary. I could just put these, which are the fanciest pastas I've ever bought in my whole entire life, straight in the chicken stock pot and then cook it with them. But no, I'm following Josh's rules exactly and he says to cook in a separate pot with the remaining two liters of stock, so. That's what I'm gonna do. Okay, I just did the last bang on the cookies. They need three sets of bangs. Apparently makes it nicer and fudgier. I do know they make them nice and flat. So we have one minute 51 left on those. We shall see what happens, if they're delectable or not. But they're nearly done. The cookies are apparently done. They have had 15 minutes, which is on the longer side of what they were supposed to have. Ooh, look interesting. This is what the cookie looks like. It looks quite dark in colour, but it looks good and crumply. It looks like someone's got a piece of paper and gone, oh, the pasta, the pasta, the pasta, no, 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 no. This seems very counterintuitive, especially because this is going to be going in here. This is being cooked in broth. Seems weird. The pasta is cooked. And Hang on, I'm going to need two hands for this because heavy pot and... When I brush things is when it always goes wrong. So, we now... Wow, that is a lot of chicken noodle soup. That is a vat. I feel like a little witch over a pot. Over a stewing pot. Here is the soup. I don't know about you, but if that doesn't get you craving a chicken noodle soup, I don't know what will. Wasn't the best chicken noodle soup I've ever had. I did have seconds. Probably had seconds as well over there, but it wasn't. It could have more flavour, don't you think? Mm, I thought it was like delicious. It, you thought it was nice. Yeah. But it could have been touched more. Mm, I liked it. <laughs> it was nice. Don't get me wrong, but I think I prefer the Panera bread one. That one just had the sauce. Probably just full of sugar. Probably, probably not chicken noodle mm. soup at all. Um, but that yeah, it was good and it felt wholesome. It felt like it did did the job of a chicken noodle soup, but I wanted a tiny bit more flavour. But maybe it's because I didn't add the um, bunch of herbs in at the right point. I added it in 10 minutes late. But I don't Surely imagine. Not. I don't imagine. Anyway, all the cookies are done as well. So, we've got all the cookies mm. that are nice and getting chewy gooey. So I forgot to mention yesterday, my brother-in-law said that the cookies weren't quite as good as the other recipe that I had recently tested, which shall be going up on Crack Snacks soon. But they are good, although I wonder, the recipe said to use dark chocolate, and I know he's more of a milk man. So I feel like if you use milk in this, it'd be really, really good. And would be a cracking cookie. Because texturally, fantastic, chewy, really good. And that's the end of the video. I genuinely love that recipe book so much and I kind of want to make everything in it. Um, shout out Josh, honestly. I mean, I, everyone knows Josh. His recipes are fantastic. They're so easy to follow, um, but also just produce the most delicious food. So, I kind of recommend the cookbook enough. Sounds like a sponsorship. Sounds just like a fangirl. Well, I am a fangirl. Really thoroughly enjoyed. 10 out of 10, would recommend. Isn't that right, Banks? Isn't that right?